Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode right here on EV Myth Busted. And for those of you who are joining us on for the very first time and you're wondering, hey, what's this all about? Well, on EV Myth Busted is where we actually dive into myths about EVs, things like you know, can a car go really fast? Mm. And how fast can how far can EV go? And a whole bunch of other myths that you might have heard about and you want cleared. And joining me once again on this episode of EV Miss Bustler is my partner in crime, my co-host, my good friend, Mr. Dan Cole. Hello, All Renee. Right. It's great to be back. Uh, thanks a lot for tuning in to the second episode of Myth Busted. Uh, certainly quite excited to bust some myths today because yes. uh, we've talked about five different myths Those on the previous episode. If you exactly. haven't really catch it, uh, do check out his channel, of course. Uh, I think we've got lots in store for you today. Definitely, definitely. And we're going to be covering... Um, everything you need to know about you know EVs in general right, right. Uh, that people often have some misconceptions about right so even uh, so before we even begin do yeah. remember to hit on that like and subscribe button to join to find out more about Rev Evolution and also if you happen to have any questions about EVs do drop us a line as well and that yeah. being said it's time to hit on myth number one all right what's all right. the first myth okay the first myth are you ready then yes you me. need to go okay here we go i need to install a home charging station stop okay. we don't need that no more <laughs> okay uh, well at least if you look at the current infrastructure that we have in singapore mm -hmm. uh, a lot of EVs chargers are just readily available for you. Okay. I think like within a, a what 500 meter, yes, I dare say so myself, yes, true, true, true. Uh, range, you can easily find a charging port, that's for sure. But the issue is whether you can fast like, find a fast or slow charging. That's right. And um, besides, I mean, uh, while it's convenient, a level two home charger is not always necessary. And public charging stations like uh, what I've rightly mentioned are always or increasingly available. You look at malls, you look at HDB flats, and just anywhere in public right you could find yeah. just the charging area for cars and i'm pretty sure you could see i mean it's what in blue colored right yes yeah, it's, it's color coded on, in, 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 on the defender i guess like, yeah, yeah it's color coded as well so it's quite easy to spot one so i right. think when it comes to range anxiety you know um especially in a place like singapore where you know we don't really have to drive for long periods of the, yeah. Yeah, time right and distances uh, I don't think that you know having to install a charging at home is right. necessary right yeah. and and from I mean this is once again I'm coming from a perspective of being here in Singapore yeah. because uh, I believe if you're staying uh, maybe in Europe or even in America yeah. where you actually have the space to install one yeah. uh, and then of course you definitely want to get one installed at in home yeah. but in Singapore uh, okay, so the whole thing is with, with a couple of brands that you buy EVs from they yeah. actually give you a choice when you buy that car they can actually give you a choice of giving you or helping you install a home charger in your yeah. home or yeah. if you happen to be staying in a HDB like me yeah. uh, they'll then they'll give you a choice of maybe giving you uh, say vouchers mm. worth maybe I don't know how much you know depending on how oh, trust me it will save yeah, you a yeah, lot yeah so they actually yeah. give vouchers to actually use uh, to offset the fact that because you don't have a home charging they're giving you those vouchers yeah. so you, you know that's that's kind of either or and also but and also if you happen to be staying in a private estate or you have your own home then of course having uh, a, a charging is, yeah. is, is a nice thing to have of course yeah once you get them from work you just plug your car in and yeah. you can charge it you know so exactly so I, I so I don't really think it is necessary but maybe you know, once again it's all about geographics and yeah. you know, where, wherever you're staying. And then again, yeah. I, guess, I guess, I mean, in Singapore's context, it's more about convenience yeah, at exactly. this point. So right. it's more of a, I would dare say, one than a need. Yeah, you know? exactly. That is the word yeah. I was going to say. Yeah, okay. What's and the now, second myth? Okay, moving on to our next myth. Yeah. Uh, EVs don't have enough range for daily use. Okay, so this mm. was basically something we kind of touched on in, in our first episode. But, yeah. you know, it's, it's, it's good to have a little kind of a recap. Yeah. Well, uh, to be honest, folks, as what I believe Dan did answer this in his yeah. the first episode, right? Yep. Okay, uh, the way EVs are being built nowadays, you're looking at a range of about minimum, I would dare say, uh, 400 kilometers okay. to actually you know, drive. And, and it goes on to maybe, uh, and I believe some manufacturers are actually now looking at doing a range of about 1,000 over km on, on a charge, which is really a mind blowing because, crazy. and I think this is really good for people who stay in places like Europe or yeah. America where you yeah. have those really long highways yeah. and roads. So, um, honestly folks, uh, if, if you're talking about there's not enough range to use, I can you can think, you can just throw it out the window and if you happen to have an, uh, yeah. an ice, go out and, and 
get an EV. Right. And let's be real, right? I mean, how often do you actually sit on yeah. a journey yeah. of maybe 500 kilometers yeah. at one shot, exactly. right? Correct. So eventually you'll find a spot where ideally there would be a charging Correct. area Definitely. Uh, sure. For you to kind of like uh, charge and while you sip on some coffee, take exactly. a break from drive. Correct. And besides, we don't condone driving for long periods of time as well. So exactly. that's something that you don't really want to think about. Um, but then again, I guess range anxiety, it's still a real issue. It is, it is. And hopefully in time, in the next couple of years, we will start to address that yep. uh, with longer battery yeah, life. Right. Right? And we can say it's all about, you know, econo economics and, and geography. So, yeah. no, I can't say for the rest of the countries, but in Singapore, yeah. you don't have to worry about it. Okay, now here's our next myth all for right. you, all right? Uh, don't, don't EVs have a shorter lifespan than gas-powered cars? Oh, no. Oh, yeah, that's, that's for you. The very reason why I really, really like EVs uh -huh. above, you know, a gas power cars or just ice in general, mm -hmm. right? Is because they have fewer moving moving parts. So the drive trains, they don't really move as much as, you know, you have with right. your uh, gasoline or say petrol run cars. Right. And they require less maintenance. So that means less pockets of money every couple of months yep. where you got to bring your car in for maintenance, exactly. right? Exactly. Totally so great. many EVs have even proven to have lasted well above 300,000 kilometers with batteries only showing, you know, minor um, yeah, degradation, yeah, right? Exactly. So I think then then again, I mean, if you're looking at saving in the long run, EVs right. does really make sense because yes, yes. they don't really, I mean, the older EVs, of course, and they're not as innovative as the one right. we have today. Yep. But I can say for sure that the ones on the roads, the modern EVs yep. that's already available in the markets, they definitely have a lot of a uh, longer lifespan than you would think. That's yeah. right. Okay, and, and to add my five cents or worth to what just just yeah. uh, Dan just said, just look at it, folks. Really, really simple. Open up your bonnet if you have yeah. a, an ice. Or open up yeah. your bonnet and tell me what do you see? You see an engine, and what does an engine need? It yeah. needs oil, yeah. right? Okay, and, and then you see your radiator. What does a radiator need? It needs water. Yeah. All right, and there's just so much, and also the things like your spark plugs. Yeah. You know, there's just so many things. So many things. Yeah, that that you need there's to actually maintain. Like Cables Correct. and all that yeah. sticking around. So, so, the, so you've got really a lot of things to actually uh, really maintain, take yeah. care of, and change. But if you look at it in an EV, uh, you know, but besides yeah. the tires uh, and, and the brakes, it's so and simple. The batteries, exactly. Yeah. There's really nothing for you to actually maintain. So, yeah. uh, this is also an argument which I've, I've done with a lot of people. So, uh, it comes to maintaining once I can tell you honestly, folks, uh, it, it's really easy to maintain an EV. Right. Yeah. So, is it busted? Is yeah, it busted? it's pretty much busted. So, okay. uh, for those of you looking for less trouble, right? There you go. EVs is the way to go. All right. And now on to my next myth. Okay. EVs are not safe. Okay. Mm. Once again, a very subjective, uh, yeah. uh, a very subjective myth because you've actually, I, I know we heard a lot of, we actually heard and seen a lot of horror stories where uh, EVs are catch catch fire. I think yeah, yeah probably see because of the batteries, right? Yeah, exactly. Explode exactly. And the pressure yeah. and all that kind right, of stuff. Right. Exactly. So, uh, so. That being said, uh, EVs before I mean before they even hit the road, uh, okay, the, they go through really a lot of safety testings and yeah. and and on the fact that they can even pass those tests and to be on the road, I think that speaks for itself. Of course, yeah. I believe uh, you know before they actually send it out to different countries, the countries yeah. themselves for Singapore, is, for example, we have this thing called the LTA. Yeah. Uh, we actually send the cars for testing. Uh, it's it's uh, you know, to to it's, it, it's it's called a homogeneous test or something. I don't yeah. know what call it, but so they actually have to make these cars really. Uh, test that they're really roadworthy for, for the roads themselves. So yeah. we actually have two levels of testing before you, the consumer, actually gets the car. So I would yeah. say, and in general, honestly, I mean, you do, I, I know once in a while you do get this little, you know, things like car catching mm. fire and stuff like that. Yeah. But in general, I would think EVs are safe. What's, what, what's your take on that, man? Well, personally, I feel like, you know, in every country, we've got rules and regulations in place to kind of keep these EVs uh, in check, of course. Uh, and plus, I mean, it's really not that easy to pass through checks and allow your batteries to just Correct. explode exactly. out of the blue. So personally, I, I think here in Singapore as well, uh, our LTA is really, really strict on yeah, these yeah. you know, regulations that our EV companies have, yeah. or cars in general, companies yeah. have, they have to stick to. Correct, exactly. So I guess you can uh, just in general buy an EV or just cars without feeling like they're or they will fail on you, yeah. yeah. Exactly, right. So I think that's definitely one to be busted. And plus, come on, we're in 2020, right? Yeah. So like, uh, innovation has definitely improved in ways that you can imagine. So that's probably the least of your worries. Right. And now yeah. on to our very last myth for this yeah. episode. All right, and it's for you, Dan. Uh, yep. Is it true that EVs can't handle cold or hot weather very well? Ah, okay, that's another good, good question. Good. It yeah. is, it is. It because, is. Uh, I know that like, weather can definitely uh, affect the way a car performs, that's but right. 
yes, we can't deny the fact that extreme weather can certainly reduce range. Right. But EVs are designed with thermal management systems okay. and with preconditioning and smart driving habits. They also work relatively well in all climates. And besides, I mean, here in Singapore, right, uh, our climate is pretty much the same yeah. year, all year round. Two seasons. Uh, Two seasons. R- rain yeah. and sun. Rain <laughs> and summer. <laughs> so uh, I don't think there's much for us to complain. And yeah. besides, I mean, most of these EVs are normally built in areas with really, really bad conditions. Definitely. Snow, summer, yeah, sure. autumn, winter, you name it, right? And I guess in a sense, they, this is really considered, yep. you know, during the researching pro- exactly, the progress, right. the R&D yep. period where yep. before the cars get commissioned to be able to drive on the roads yep. legally, right? So I think generally speaking, especially for the modern EVs that we're seeing on the roads today, they do tend to perform very well, especially on our roads here in Singapore. For sure. Um, and they, yeah, they can definitely drive you from point A to point B safely. Yeah, yeah. Because I mean, the the myth about you know, um, you know, EVs or you know, things that run on batteries, yeah. uh, running in cold weather. Because honestly, I had experience as well. Because yeah. I, I when I do you know, I fly a drone. Yeah. So when I actually did fly in when I was in a really cold country, yeah. uh, my battery re- level really drained very fast. Yes. Yeah. You know, so that's but then that is a, that's a drone basically. That. But yeah. you're talking about a car in general, like an EV, of course, uh, like you mentioned, uh, you know, these brands have this thing called a thermal management system, which yeah. actually uh, kind of protects the battery from uh, the cold weather and actually yeah. helps, make, gives it, you know, helps it actually run or perform equally or not better in, in all these different conditions. And yeah. come on, I mean, these are all uh, manufacturers who have spent multi-billion dollars into exactly. the R&D, so they, you know, they definitely want to make sure that it works in all the weather. So yeah, myth yeah. busted, I guess. Yeah, and yeah. I'm pretty sure the warranty is covered by it as well. Because so if there are any issues with that, you know, um, I'm gl- I'm sure that these uh, Brands manufacturers and w- they would gladly cover it for you. Definitely. So yeah, that would pretty much do it. Right, uh, folks. Busted. And I guess with that one, this kind of wraps up. Yep, another very interesting episode right here on Revs EV Myth Busted. Okay, I'm gonna say a very big thank you to, of course, uh, my friend Dan here for kind of joining me and taking the wheel and you know helping us do the episode thanks you know, Dan you don't, again. you don't have any uh, motion sickness right <laughs> no no no, no I'm good I'm nauseous, all right? nice and comfy and of course you know, <laughs> thank us th- th- uh, thank uh, Smart as well for allowing us to have this EV to kind of do our episode right oh, yeah. so till our very next episode where we c- uncover more myths uh, about EVs uh, and like I said if you have any questions or things that you want to see or hear about kind of drop us a uh, message on our on our, on, on, on our, on our very, various platforms and we'll be more than happy to then I can answer them alright till uh, we catch you on our very next episode it's myself Renee and myself Denko signing off <laughs> <laughs>